The King's North Lobotomy presents... Entropy. Okay, so there's a man. Let's call him Steve. Steve is 40 years old, 5 foot 8 inches tall, he's slightly overweight and universally disliked by pretty much everyone who's ever met him, including myself. Which may go to explain his almost complete absence from this story. This story is about a man. Let's call him Philip. That's not his name, but he needs to be called something and Philip is banal enough to be believable. So Philip's a man. A stressed man, a confused man, but definitely a man. And he's been looking for his place in life for a long time. Always make sure the front cover is fully locked down. Then flick the locks. One, two, and three. Then, when it's secured, you set the dial to 17. Open the chute, then dispose. Now, always make sure you've got your eye guards on at all times, as this stuff can burn your retinas right out without them. Okay, now, once the unit is empty, you press the release button and put the canister into the dumpster marked incinerate. Being careful all the time not to let it make contact with human flesh. Okay, everyone got that? Yes. Any questions? Does anyone else have a feeling of impending doom? Phil had had this feeling for a long time, ever since he saw that street preacher. Repent! Repent, sinners! For the end is coming, and coming sooner than you think, my friends! The heathens will be burnt by God's fiery wrath! Do not be amongst them! Repent now, and you will be saved! That's what's written in the Bible! Hey mate, spoilers! Spoilers! I've not read that yet! You'll not be laughing, young man, when the rapture finally comes! Because it's people like you that will feel the Almighty's fury first. It will be me, my friend, standing at God's side, laughing at you as you feel the full force of his divine recompense. But he learned to live with a constant feeling of doom, which he used to put down to indigestion. I like the sound fizzy drinks make when you open them. It's like a little sigh. It's like they're saying, So this is the end, is it? That's a funny thing to like. I don't know. It's like a little bit of empathy. Yeah, but it's empathy with your lunch. And that's odd? Yeah, that's odd. Next you'll be befriending your salad or something. You know, lobsters have a little scream when you cook them. Really? Yep. They're men rice krispies. Rice krispies? Yeah. That's what that snap, crackle and pop business is all about. It's like a thousand little screams. Oh, God, no! No! Oh, the humanity! This cruel, cruel world! (laughs) Don't don't, don't give me that load of old pony. (laughs) It's true. Don't give me that. Here, listen to this fizzy drink. Oh, oh, God! Oh, Christ! Oh, oh stop it! Stop it fizzing up! Oh. Well, that wasn't how I expected it to end. Well, you two girls stop flirting, you've got work to do. Drop, Drop dead, dead Steve. Steve. Your break's ended five minutes ago. Everyone hates you, Steve. On December the 1st, 1955, in Montgomery, Alabama, a woman named Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat in the coloured section of the bus to a white passenger. Parks' act of defiance became an important symbol to the modern civil rights movement. She became an international icon of resistance to racial segregation. Eventually, Rosa Parks moved to Detroit, Michigan. From 1965 to 1988, she served as secretary and receptionist to John Conyers. After her retirement, Parks wrote her autobiography, and in her final years, she suffered from dementia. In 1999, a lawsuit was filed on her behalf against the band Outcast because of the unauthorised use of her name in the song Rosa Parks. Years later, Philip visited his girlfriend. So what did you do today? Huh? When was today? Now? Now is today. Now? Well, now I'm doing this. 
But what did you do before? Before what? Before now. Well, you know, I went to school, I walked the dog, I went on holiday with my family. I used to play in a folk band. No, 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 no. Not that far before, I just mean earlier. Earlier than what? Earlier, just... uh, Never mind. I just wanted to know if you'd thought about my question. I don't know. I don't think I'm ready. It's just dinner at my sister's. Yeah, but, you know, your parents will be there. Yes, that's the point, so you can meet them. I don't think I'm ready. I mean, we've only been going out five years. Hello. The cash machine says I haven't got any money. Okay, sir. And what seems to be the problem? I need to draw some money out. Well, you can't do that unless you have any money, sir. But I do have money. I checked online. I was paid last night. Do you have your card, sir? Yes, here. Right, then. Oh, right. Can I have some money, then? No, sir. Why not? You haven't got any money, sir. Why haven't I got any money? You spent it all, sir. No, I didn't. Yes, you did, sir. When? When you were in the Philippines. The Philippines? Yes, sir, the Philippines. When the hell was I supposed to be there? Um, the last transaction was ten past ten. Ten past ten this morning? That's right, sir. This morning? You know what time it is right now? It's half eleven, sir. So how in God's name am I supposed to have got from South East Asia to London in an hour and twenty minutes? Well, maybe that's why you haven't got any money, sir. If you're suggesting I frittered the last of my cash away on ultrasonic travel, you're very much mistaken. What you do with your money, sir, is none of my business. <sighs> so what do you suggest I do? Don't know. Borrow some money from a friend? Philip had recently noticed that he'd reached a point in his life when all of his friends had changed careers and become estate agents. You should knock that wall down. That'll give this place an open plan sort of feel. Reopen that fireplace. That's an original feature. And turn that cupboard upstairs into an ensuite. That'll add about mm, £3,000 to this place. Yeah, but it'll probably annoy my landlord. And Phil complained to his doctor about depression, but found his medical advice lacking. Take two of these and you'll be pain-free in the morning. What are they? Cyanide. Phil, good to see you again. You're looking great, mate. Am I? Oh, um, I guess I've lost a bit of weight. Yeah, good for you. Good for you. Been working out? Working on those abs? No, just gone off food lately. Oh, one of those crash diet things. Kickstart the metabolism? Yeah, something like that, Andy. Something like that. Lovely day, though, isn't it? Lovely. I should go out there for a jog myself. Carpe diem and all that. Listen, Andy, is Naomi in? Oh, no, I've not seen her for days. Are you a member of the gym? I've been thinking of signing up for ages. What do you mean you've not seen her for ages? Oh, just what I said, I've not seen her for days. It'll be nice to start swimming again. You used to love to swim. Where's she gone? Oh, I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? How can you not know where your wife's gone for several days? Mm, don't know. How can you not know? Well, you don't know either. She's your wife! She's your sister! That's different. We're supposed to lose touch from time to time. Yeah, you're right. Did I say it was nice seeing her again, Phil? You're looking great, mate. Did she leave a note? Did who leave a note? Naomi! Oh, no, I don't think so. No. No, she would have said something before she left. So you saw her before she left? Oh, yeah. What did she say? She said, I'm leaving you, Andy. And then what? And then she left. Woman of her word is Naomi. And you didn't do anything? What do you want me to do? I don't know. You know her better than I do. Go after her. Chase her. Stop her from leaving. What good would that do, Phil? I don't know. How could you be so chilled out about it? Well, there's no use worrying about these things, Phil. But anyway, I hope you're hungry. Your parents will be here soon. Trepanning is a surgical procedure in which a hole is drilled into the human skull. Evidence of trepanation can be found in Neolithic human remains. In the 1520s, the hole in the patient's skull was often filled with a coin after the operation. 
The procedure was thought to be used as an attempted cure for epilepsy, migraines and mental disorders. The practice is no longer in use in the medical community and is considered unnecessary. Philip shared this view. Gus, do you ever worry that people might think you're gay? Me? I'm a married man. Married? Well, it's a civil partnership. That's more like it. It's with a woman. Yeah, okay. It is. And I have two kids. Really? Well, they're hers from a previous relationship, but that doesn't mean anything. There's nothing remotely gay about me. I'm just saying there's a certain sort of person who might assume a person who speaks like you to be a homosexual. What do you mean, a person who speaks like me? How do I speak? You know, effeminately. Oh, what do you mean, effeminately? No, sorry, I didn't mean anything bad by it. I should smash your teeth in for that. I could bloody do it too. I've been working out. <coughs> no, you haven't. Yes, I have. I've been going to a keep fit class. Come on, Fitz. Oh, it's called Aero Dance. It's down at the You've community centre on Tuesdays fit and every other class. Thursday. So no such place as Aero Dance. Come, oi, oi, like oi, it. oi, oi, break sober. Get back to work. Shut, Shut up, up, Steve. Steve. You're a waste of space. Stephen was universally disliked by everyone. But Philip had other problems to contend with. Hello, lifesavers. Um, hello. You okay? Um, not really. Oh, what's bothering you? I just have this feeling that something terrible is going to happen. Why do you say that? I don't know. It's just a feeling I have. Well, stop worrying about it. It'll be fine. I'm sorry? It'll be fine. You can't just say that. Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah. You can't just say, it'll be fine, in a dismissive tone. I, I didn't say in a dismissive tone. You did? I, I was reassuring you. That's not how you reassure people. You're supposed to talk to me about my problems. Sorry, okay, if you want to be like that about it. What do you mean, like that? Like what? All needy. I'm not needy! You are, and I'll tell you what, it's very unattractive in a man. Well, you shouldn't tell me that. You should reassure me. I told you everything will be fine. I don't want to hear everything will be fine. Well, why did you phone us then? I wanted someone to listen to me. Listen to you moan, you mean? Well, maybe I do want you to listen to me moan. I'm not paid for this, you know. What? I'm not being paid for this nonsense. I'm a volunteer. What's that got to do with anything? If you don't want to listen to people's... Oh, shush, 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 shush. What? Don't shush. Shush, shush, quiet. I like this bit. What do you mean you like... Are you watching television? Um, no. The meal went okay. Well, that's good. I ate loads. Yeah? Well, I had to eat your share too. Was it good? I don't know. Everything seems to taste funny these days. You know, my parents were really gutted you didn't come. No, I couldn't. I, I just couldn't go. Why not? Um, there was a thing. Yes, there was a big thing and I couldn't. What do you mean by thing? Um, I don't really know. I was thinking on my feet. I would ask why you're acting like this all of a sudden, but the truth is you've always been like it. My therapist says I'm close to a breakthrough. You're seeing a therapist again? No. But you just said... I'm not seeing my therapist again. I'm seeing my therapist still. I never stopped going. I just said I did so you wouldn't worry. But you're close to a breakthrough? Yeah. She seems to think I'll be able to be seen in public with you soon. Oh. Well, that's going to be great. Think of all the things we can do together. I don't know, Phil. I just get the feeling that no one fully understands me. I'm starting to think no one fully understands anyone. Right, you want another burger? Um, no, I've not finished this one yet. So what are you after? I just wondered if this is okay. What do you mean, okay? Well, you know, I, I was wondering if it's alright. What are you suggesting? Oh, no, no, I, I'm not suggesting anything. Yes, you are. It just tastes a little odd. Odd? Yeah. Is it possible to get a refund? No. You've taken a bite out of it now. 
course I did. That's how I knew it tasted funny. Give it here. Rough one. Are you sure? Yeah, that's what burgers taste like. Can I swap it for a hot dog? As long as you pay for it. Oh. oh. Right. To be honest, I'm a little light on cash at the moment. I couldn't get any money out of the cash point. Oh, oh this isn't right. What's up? I have a funny feeling in my stomach. You saying that's my fault? Not necessarily. Look, look there. I've got a four-star hygiene award. Four-star. I'm legal, mate. No, no, I know you are. Then what are you on about? Nothing. Sorry, I must just have a funny taste in my mouth or something. Can I get a can of lemonade? There. Thank you. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um... <laughs> Philip tried to make a conscious effort to go out, relax and try and enjoy life. He resolved to do more things by himself. <laughs> this is a thing, isn't it? A thing? This is definitely a thing. People tell me to get out and do more things. This is a thing, isn't it? Is this your friend? Did you phone him up and say, do you want to go to a thing? And he was like, nah, not really. And you were like, oh, come on. It'll be a really great thing. It could be the best thing in your whole life. Oh, I don't know. I'm quite tired and I have work in two or three days time. I'm not really in the mood. And you said, come on. When was the last time you went to a thing? I don't know. I'm not really in the mood for a thing. Will there be many people there? No. Oh, all right, I'll go to that thing then. So here you both are, at a thing. Later on we can bump into each other and nod at each other and say, all right, this could be the thing we talk about for the rest of our lives. Tomorrow you two will be all like, you enjoy that thing? Yeah, I did. I did enjoy that thing. Apart from that bloke with the beard, he was terribly non-specific. I enjoyed that thing so much, I'm going to put it on a list of things I like. Number one, things. An all-encompassing list there. So here we are, at a thing. Yeah. Yeah. What time is it? Nine. Oh, it's still early. Um, we have to go. So do we. Sky is very dark, don't you think? It's very dark for this time of year, don't you think? Is it Sunday today? What does that mean? Today, is it Sunday? What does that matter? The sky isn't darker on Sundays. No, we, we've not had any posts. Were you expecting anything? No, not really. What does it matter then? Well, there might be a letter from the council in there. About it being so dark, you mean? I mean, look at the sky. It's like midnight. It's only four o'clock. Often gets dark at four. In the winter! In the winter! It's the middle of August now. It should be bright blue sky up there. Nope. Not here. What's not here? The post isn't here. Naomi isn't here. Maybe she's at the council. Why would she be at the council? She's probably trying to find out why it's so dark. I wouldn't go out when it was this dark. There you go. She's like your mother is, Naomi. She's probably at home. Dad, why would I be looking here if Naomi was at home? She's not at home then. No, she left. Is that why she wasn't at the meal? Yes, how many times do I have to tell you things? Your girlfriend wasn't at the meal either, and she left too. No, not yet. Have you had any post yet? <sighs> no, Mum, I've not had any post. Have you tried phoning the police? You think I should file a missing persons report? No! I mean, they might know why it's so dark out. They might know why there's no post. No, that's not important. It is important. It shouldn't be this dark at this time of year. And they might have a letter from the council. God! Right. If you see Naomi, tell her to phone me. That sky is very dark. Having failed in the attempt to do more things, Philip continued to try and relax. Hello? Alright. Do you want anything or are you just browsing? Um, no, no. I'd like a massage, please. What sort of massage? Oh, just an ordinary massage. You know, not the happy ending sort. You what? I don't want a massage with a um, happy ending. It's a bleeding back rub, not a fairy story. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just some massage parlours, you know, offer extras. 
What sort of extras are you after? No, 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 no. I, I, I'm not after extras. Then why bring it up? I just wanted you to know that I'm here for a legitimate massage. Okay, one legitimate massage. We have a slot free in half hour. Great, I'll take it. Here, you can take the money up front. Ta. And if you could let the girl know about me not wanting a happy ending, I'll be much more comfortable with that. Now, I've told you before, I don't know what this happy ending business is. It's a euphemism for extras. What are these extras? Well, it doesn't matter. I don't want them. What don't you want? A happy ending. I don't know what that is, so you can either stop talking in riddles, or you can go and rub your back against a tree like a bear. I, um, don't want to be masturbated by a Vietnamese transsexual. Good. (laughs) Good. We don't offer that as a service. Well, I'm pleased, but it's best to be safe than sorry. Now you can leave. But what about my massage? That appointment was terminated when you implied my masseurs were whores. But I didn't want whores. I was hoping they weren't whores. I don't care. You can tell your story walking. But, but, but... Out. Can I at least have my money back? Nope. Do you want to split up? No. Why do you say that? I mean, we've been going out for five years. So we should split up? No. What are you talking about then? I don't know. I'm just clutching at straws here. What do you mean? Well, most couples are living together at this point. You want to move in? Not necessarily, no. What do you want then? Um, don't know. Well, worrying won't get you anywhere. I know, I know. Still love me? Of course I do. I love you too. (laughs) Will you rub my back? Oh, I don't think I could do that. On Thursday, May the 6th, 1937, the German passenger airship LZ-129 Hindenburg caught fire and was destroyed as it attempted to dock at Lakehurst Naval Air Station. 35 passengers and one crew member died. The cause of the fire remains unknown, as does Philip's job. You asked to see me, Mr. Bitterman. Mr. Bitterman? (coughs) Where am I? You're at work, Mr. Bitterman. What are you doing here? I work here too, sir. No, 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 in my office. What are you doing in my office? You asked to see me, sir. Did I? What was that? I don't know, sir. Oh, well, it must be written down here somewhere. Help me look. Is this a bottle of urine? I think it's scotch, sir. Really? Well? Yeah, it's one or the other. Possibly both. Ah! This is what I was looking for. I've received an official complaint. About me? Yeah, I'm afraid so. From who? I'm afraid I cannot tell you that. Why not? No idea. Steve said I couldn't tell you when he dropped it off. Steve made it? My God, that's a bloody good guess. What's his problem? Says you've been behaving in an unprofessional manner towards him. I don't treat him any differently than anyone else who works here. I know. He's filed complaints against all of them, too. Even me. He's a dick, sir. No one knows that better than anyone he's ever met. Can't you sack him? Afraid not. He's the only one who knows how to fill out the dismissal paperwork. Damn it! I know. Scotch? I'll pass, thanks. As Philip stomped into the night, his internal monologue was set to repeat. It's like the whole world's out of sync. It's the middle of the day. What the hell is up with this world? Is it just me or does nothing make sense anymore? I can't say No one talks to each other. No one talks to each other. It's like the whole world's out of sync. Why is it so bloody dark? It's the middle of the day. No one talks to each other. It's just me. No one talks to each other. No one's like the world's out of sync. And why is it so bloody dark? 
Repent! Repent, sinners! God may love you, but there is no space for sinners at the captain's table in heaven. Repent your sin now while there is still time! Repent your sins and gather your loved ones, because God's wrath is close at hand. He is angry! My God is angry! And he is going to rid this world of sinners! Build an ark if you want to survive the apocalypse! The end is nigh, my friends! How nigh? The end is really, really nigh! Promise? Oh, I promise! I'll hold you to that! It's a Wonderful Life is an American Christmas film directed by Frank Capra and starring James Stewart. Released on the 20th of December 1946 and considered a box office flop, the film has since become regarded as a classic. The American Film Institute rank it as number 11 on the 100 greatest American films ever made, and almost 70 years after the film's release, the world came to an end. <laughs> Philip was disappointed that he had achieved very little before his death, but he was satisfied to know that he had a gut instinct which could be relied upon. I'm not gay! Would everyone stop saying it? Why can't people listen? No one can have any money unless there is some in their account! Keep your chin up, worst things happen at sea. This place fine me, a little stale, a little stale maybe, but fine. That's how burgers always taste. Oi, you can't stop working, you don't have great fries. Go to hell, Steve. Take my advice. Don't sober up. These things just sort of slide past when you've got a litre of scotch in you. Will you stop calling my masseuse paws? They're not paws. This is not a knocking shop. No, it's okay. We could break the rubble up and save some rockery. The living room will be more like some decking without the walls. We're saying it's open plan. I think that sky's getting darker, if anything. But we still haven't had a divorce. I am not the sort of person to say I told you so, but this is what was written, my friends. I'm coming to see you, God. I'm coming to see you. <laughs> Philip spent his final moments with his girlfriend. The last words they shared were... I referred to you as my boyfriend in conversation yesterday. Well, I guess that's progress. There's probably a moral to this story. Entropy, written by Scott Kingsnorth, starring Samuel Marley, David Willard, Jenny Walters, Sophie Johnson, and Lawrence Robinson. Produced by Samuel Marlow and Scott Kingsnorth. Directed by Scott Kingsnorth. Music composed and performed by Ed Field. This has been a Kingsnorth Lobotomy production. <laughs>